This week's RSPW Rewind takes us back to 1995, when keyword WWF on AOL was the coolest thing to a young wrestling fan, and I would sit there waiting 30 seconds for one photo of Sonny to finish pixelating. Little did I know there was this whole other community out there in RSPW talking wrestling, and one of the things they were talking about was the debut of a new character on WWF television called Gold Dust. And as you might expect, this brought out a, a good amount of gay bashing, which I'm going through some of these posts. And look, you go to any part of the internet, and you're always going to have that element of people, you know, people who say horrible things and are probably horrible people. But I'm going through some of these comments, and, and it's just, you know, pretty repulsive stuff and not funny at all. And then there were comments about Vince McMahon losing his mind and doing it just to embarrass Dusty Rhodes. That's why he's doing this. That's why he came up with this concept. But there was also a decent amount of support for the character as well. So the time it takes me not only to research these posts, but to then correct all of the spelling errors <laughs> to make them readable on the show, you could watch two full episodes of Raw every week, which I would not ask you to do. But I do it out of love, and uh, this week was no exception. I had fun putting this together. We begin with this post from T.C. Cannon on July 23rd, 1995, right after the first Gold Dust vignette had aired on television. The title of the post is, Gee, wonder who Gold Dust is. It says, this one isn't going to take a genius to figure out. At least they aren't making Dusty's pup take on a super lame name like Rad Radford or Waylon Mercy. I do wonder exactly what the gimmick will be, though. Any ideas? Steve responds, It's only natural. And he put natural in uh, quote marks. I wonder if Steve uh, patted himself on the back for that one. Maybe patted himself on the back so hard he burped himself. He says his father was Stardust, and he is Gold Dust. So a very astute observation by Steve. And in fact, long before Cody was uh, playing Gold Dust, or uh, Stardust rather, on TV, Dusty Rhodes would call himself Stardust many years ago. TC Cannon returned a few weeks later on August 14th. Headline is, Unbelievable, Gold Dust is Born. It says, I bet most of you RSPWers think that little Dustin looks like a fool and acts like a bigger one with the wig and the paint. But this gimmick, if done right, could be worked incredibly well. Dustin can work, and if they put a lot of time into his push and keep him evil and not comical, Dustin could be the next great heel. The next day, though, Pat Savino, he chimed in to raid on TC Cannon's parade. He says, yeah, I can't wait until he feuds with Alundra Blaze for the women's title. Hardy har har. August 15th. R. Bowman has this to say. I can't believe that so many people are getting so bent out of shape by Dustin's new gimmick. I think it's great, and it's going to draw major heat. I'll admit that when I first saw it, I was shocked, and after watching wrestling for 25 plus years, it takes a lot to shock me. Upon first seeing Gold Dust, I thought it was so stupid. Then Dustin started to talk. He comes across as this depraved glitter boy who just crawled out of the Mondo Bizarre underbelly of the L.A. club scene. I, I've not read a description like that before, but that's, uh, there you go. Well, I guess that's one interpretation of it. Does the name Ziggy Stardust ring any bells? I have to give a huge amount of credit to Dustin to have the balls to go through with this gimmick and have the talent behind the mic to pull it off. I think they are walking a fine line with this and cannot let it get out of control. Goldust can't get too effeminate or he will lose his edge. This is a perfect gimmick for the 90s. Both the Marks will hate him. And judging from the responses here, a large number of the Smart fans will also. I think Vince has been right on the mark with a few of the latest gimmicks he's introduced. Dean Douglas is coming along nicely. Well, who wants to be the one to tell him? Waylon Mercy has become an interesting performer, and now Goldust. I think people are missing the point on some of these gimmicks. They require a bit more thought to appreciate them than the standard WWF gimmicks. Let's face it, a hog farmer, gold dust ain't. 
give Goldust some time to think about what they are trying to accomplish with the character. Anyway, if you still hate him and want him to get his teeth handed to him, I guess the gimmick did what it was supposed to do. Big thumbs up, Dustin. You nailed it. So that's a big endorsement for, uh, for Dustin Rhodes and the Goldust gimmick. Carl and Nancy McCaskey respond. This is Carl, or, or as Rick Grimes would say, Coral. Coral. Only Walking Dead fans will get that reference. Does the name Exotic Adrian Street ring any bells to you? Dustin's going to have to work very hard to surpass Street's performances. Come to think of it, Street and Dusty Rhodes worked together for many years, so Dustin might be drawing upon Street's angles of the 70s and 80s. On Dustin having the talent to pull this off, he also needs a whole lot of super glue to keep that wig from falling off. And hey, maybe that's going to be part of a future angle. So this was obviously before Goldust actually debuted in the ring, because from the first match, he took the wig off. People thought he might actually wrestle with the wig on. It's like The Fiend, right? I didn't know if The Fiend was going to keep the mask on or not, and then I saw that he was keeping the mask on. Sometimes you just don't know. Yo Mama responds to Carl's joke about the wig falling off. He says, great, then the WWF would be recycling old Ricky Lake angles. Anthony says, they did it on Melrose last season. See, I know I'm in a thread from 1995 when I get a Yo Mama reference, and I get references to Ricky Lake and Melrose Place. Also on August 15th, things took a bit of a darker turn with Bill Hackett, who felt the need to start a thread calling Goldust a uh, homophobic slur that I shall not repeat, and asking people to post their response. Basically, this was the earliest version of uh, Look at Me, an attention-seeking whore, here on RSPW. So the masked cruncher replied, he said, His gimmick may be somewhat weird, but I really don't think another homophobic thread is called for, do you? I'm sure you could think of something better to contribute. A user interestingly named Lagana, then posted, Well, the pure number of homophobes on RSPW is really sad. The Dustin gimmick is a mix between Adrian Street and Gorgeous George, but hey, I forgot you guys are selling out every major arena in the world, so you know what sells and what doesn't. No idea if that's THE Dave Lagana, but I suppose anything's possible. There were a lot of people uh, lurking on RSPW back then. August 20th, Jake Harrison, title of the thread, My Goldust Thoughts. He actually doesn't look gay at all to me. He looks more like a cross between a Mortal Kombat villain and a Champions of the Galaxy character. For all you Champions of the Galaxy players out there, does Goldust not look an awful lot like Killer Queen? I have no idea what this person is talking about, but perhaps uh, some of you do. Joseph says, I didn't think Killer Queen at all. More like Adrian Street and Rocky from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. We skip to August 30th and a post titled The Latest Tapings by a lady named Melina. I recently attended SummerSlam, the Raw tapings in Canton, and the tapings in Erie that will cover most of the next few weeks. Goldust came out in a long gold robe with feathers to Ric Flair's WWF music. Needless to say, some of us were not too happy with Goldust's entrance, plus the fact that some of the things he did in the ring with Razor Ramon were just plain pornographic. Well, see, I had no idea that Ric Flair ever used, or uh, Goldust ever used Ric Flair's WWF music. This is the first I'm actually reading about this. This I need to see. See, this is the sort of thing that the Hidden gem section on the network was created for. I feel like it was created for things like this. So people were asking, you know, did he take the wig off? Did he wrestle with the wig? Did he take it off? Peter Cook responds, I doubt he took off the wig. This doesn't bode well for Dustin. I wonder what the heck he did to Razor. I wonder if I even want to know. And Peter's signature on the bottom reads as follows. It says, Republican, Blue Steel Drummer, Sega Saturn Owner, Iron Maiden, and Wrestling Fan. So there's Peter Cook in a nutshell. On September 12, a user named Shampoo posted a thread. There's something I'll bet some of these people never used a day in their lives. He says, Gold Dust Heat Magnet is the title of the thread. I've only recently returned to RSPW after a summer break, and it seems the current target of choice has been Gold Dust slash Dustin Rhodes. 
Now I admit that the bodysuit and face paint combo is not the greatest gimmick for a grappler of his great talent, but believe me, it does work. I went to a house show in Niagara Falls, New York on August 30th to discover that Goldust was on the card. Mind you, I, along with most everybody else in the convention center, had no idea that Dustin was beneath the paint, but I was interested to see what was in store. His opponent was the Dumpster, and as the designated jobber to the stars, Duke entered the ring first. When Dustin began to walk down the aisle, the place went nuts, and he was milking the gimmick for all it was worth. He even had white feather edging to his robe. He entered the ring, preened for the crowd, and then pulled off his wig. Dead silence, followed by an even greater pop once people began to recognize him. The match itself was okay, with Rhodes winning with a submission move. Rhodes was quite over with the crowd. By the way, was this really his first match under Goldust? It was billed as such, but I don't know what the WWF taping schedule is like. This match would have been the Wednesday after SummerSlam. Jeremy replies, says it seems a lot of people here dislike this character. He is called all sorts of homophobic names. I ask you, though, to remember one thing. Goldust, a man who wears a long blonde wig, body glitter, lipstick, and eyeshadow, is married to Alexandra York. Go figure. Alexandra York, of course, being Marlena. Donald chimes in. You'll probably see Goldie take out the male creature of the night as a prelude to a pay-per-view coffin match with The Undertaker. I'd have to put my money on Goldust to get the reputation as the man who destroyed The Undertaker once and for all. Oh, Donald. Oh, Donald, Donald, Donald. I hope Donald doesn't bet on the horses with predictions like that. Goldust as the man to end The Undertaker once and for all. In 1995. Amazing. We skip ahead a few months to November 19th, the day of the Survivor Series. I remember that show very well. It was the Survivor Series. I think it was the U.S. Air Arena in Landover, Maryland. Bret Hart and Diesel in the main event. The wild card match. Funny, you know, all the, uh, the hatred in my heart these last few weeks. For this stupid wild card rule on Raw, but there was a time where I actually was a huge wild card fan. I actually really liked the wild card match that Gorilla Monsoon put together at the Survivor Series that year. It was just a random mixing of heels and baby faces teaming together. So, November 19th, and on that Survivor Series show, Goldust wrestled Bam Bam Bigelow. It's a post started by Bryant Farley called Goldust. Wear a cup, please. Is it just me, or was Dustin not wearing any protection at all at Survivor Series tonight? Maybe butt floss, but no cup, as his unit seemed pretty prominent tonight. Or maybe he was cold. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Ba ba back up a little bit. I'm still stuck on this butt floss thing. I've never heard of that before. I've never heard that expression used before. Butt floss? That sounds painful. Flossing your butt does not sound like an activity that I would ever care to partake in. Bryant continues. Any guys, please respond as my boyfriend thinks I'm nuts. I thought it was Mabel who works stiff in the WWF. Boy, we got a whole community full of comedians here. Someone else suggested that since it was his first pay-per-view, which it wasn't, by the way. It was not Goldust's first pay-per-view. He debuted it in your house. But he said since it was his first pay-per-view, uh, maybe he was overexcited. That's what one other person thought. Maybe that was what was going on here at this pay-per-view. Yeah, because, you know, every Halloween I get excited. And yeah, it's my favorite holiday. As you guys well know, Halloween is my favorite holiday. That doesn't mean I walk around the entire month of October with a raging boner because of it. I'm not buying that excuse. Mike says, Nope, several people at the show noticed Goldust was kind of sticking out. That outfit of his is so damn skin tight that you can see everything. My girlfriend pointed out that you could see his love handles as well. I think Vinny is just trying to add to the disgust that the fans have when they see him. We have Dan says, Love handles is the exact same phrase my friend's wife used to comment on the extra dusty fat. And we all noticed Goldilocks' little bear as well. 
If Vince is trying to add the dis to the disgust that fans feel when they see him, it works. I thought that you would be enlightened by a thread about Goldust Boner sticking out of his costume here in 1995. These people, by the way, are not wrong. I noticed it too back then. It was impossible not to. It was Thankfully, he got rid of those uh, skin-tight outfits, but it took a few months. It took a while before he finally uh, wore something that was a little, a little bit looser. And we'll end with this. This is not a gold dust thread per se, but this made me laugh out loud when I read the first reply. One year later, on November 6, 1996, a user named The Masked Canuck, The Masked Canuck, he reached his boiling point with WWF programming and he started a thread titled, WWF Gets One More Chance. Tell me if this doesn't sound like the sort of thing you would read in every Facebook group today. After last Monday's Raw, I have decided that if WWF plans to continually broadcast garbage, I will stop watching their shows altogether. Brian Pillman takes out a gun. Nice message you're sending to the kids, Vince. And I did see that uh, Goldust kissed Barry Windham during their match. That's absolutely disgusting, and it has no place in the squared circle. Last chance. So that was from the masked Canuck. He's putting WWF on notice. Well, this is what the Bang Bang Kid had to say in response to the masked Canuck. I heard on a hotline that McMahon called his bookers in for an emergency round-the-clock brainstorming session last night. It seems everyone was called in to find ways to appease the masked Canuck, who has given Titan notice that he may soon not like them anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. Reportedly, the phrase, rat's ass, came up repeatedly during the discussion of the Canuck situation. Yeah, I wonder if that was on Mean Gene's hotline. Oh my goodness. Fireball says, You know, after seeing this type of message for the nth time, I can honestly say that a good chunk of the RSPW users don't know what the fuck they want in life. We bitch and complain that wrestling is geared towards kids and how it sucks, and then the feds try, I assume he means uh, you know, the, the, the wrestling promotions, not the FBI, the feds try to come up with hardcore angles and we complain about how this will affect the kids. <laughs> so that was a message from Fireball. This has been your weekly reminder that almost 25 years later, wrestling fans still don't know what the hell they want.